Hi everyone, it's my privilege to be bringing the Word of God to you today. My name's David. I'm part of the team at Kingdom City. God's going to help you today. God's going to do something good in your life. So get ready, get ready, get ready. We're going to talk about one of the miracles of Jesus. Some would say it was rather a peculiar miracle. But you know, every miracle that Jesus did actually had a message to the miracle. Apart from the immediate benefit of the person receiving a healing, there was a message. There was something He's saying to us through that miracle. And the miracle we're looking at today is taken from John chapter 9. And it says, Jesus spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes and told him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. Wow, this is an unusual miracle. Why did Jesus do that? Well, actually, it was a superstitious belief of the day that the spittle of a holy man had healing properties in it. So it was obviously the belief of this man. So Jesus was meeting the man at his level of faith. Do you know, you have a Jesus who will meet you where you are at. It's not that He's insisting that you come up to some mystical level of faith in order to get your miracle. You have a Jesus who will meet you at the level of your faith. That's why He would often say when He healed people, according to your faith, be it done unto you. That's why Jesus healed people different ways. One man he prayed for twice. Why did he do that? Well, the man was born blind and obviously believed that it would be a difficult miracle just to receive all at once. I'm going to have to be prayed for twice. So twice it was. And on we could go. Some people just required a word spoken by him and Jesus marveled at their faith. The point simply is, wow, we have a Jesus who will meet us at our level of faith. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. What else can this uh, miracle teach us? Well, along with the spittle, Jesus did the unexpected. The man might have expected the spittle part, but what he didn't expect was the dirt part. All right, so this was an unexpected aspect of the miracle. And no doubt it threw the man into confusion. You know, can we know how the miracle turned out. We've read the Bible, but can we just pause for a moment and think about the confusion this man would have been in, thinking, hang on, I asked for a miracle and what Jesus is giving me is mud. Why is He, not only is He giving me mud, He's putting mud on the very part of my body that I was wanting the miracle in. What was going on here? What is... Uh, Jesus saying to us from this miracle, I asked for a, a miracle and what He's giving me is mud. And maybe that's your situation today. You ask God for a miracle, but right now it seems like mud is coming. And by mud, I don't mean some traumatic disease, some horrible tragedy. I just simply mean a challenge. See, here's the thing about mud. It's not permanent. It washes off. It's a temporary thing. It's not a time to give up. It's a time to keep going and to deal with the situation. So Jesus put mud there deliberately to make a mess. That's why He did it. Now, why would Jesus deliberately be wanting to make a mess in this man's life? I'll tell you why. It wasn't so much about the mud. It was about what the man, the process the man had to go through in dealing with the mud. Notice that it wasn't a miracle that happened when he applied the mud. It was a miracle that happened when he washed it off. Wow, right there is the message. The miracle happens not with the mud moment, but with the dealing with it, with the, 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 the fact that we have got to go through a process within ourselves of removing this mud, this challenge, whatever is bringing to us, the challenge that's bringing to us uh, at the moment. So many of us get 
caught up in the mud and we try to think, how could this be? What does this mud mean about God? Does He really love me? What does this mud mean about me? But I want to tell you, it's not about the mud. It's in the person you become as you go and deal with it. And that's why I've called this message, Don't Get Lost on the Way to the Pool. See, if this man had have not gone straight to the pool and immediately dealt with this, it would have dried on him. It would have become a more of a permanent part of his life and his story. But that wasn't Jesus' intention. No sooner did he put it on, then he told him to take it off. It wasn't about the mud. It was about the process of dealing with it. The person that he needed to become. Why was this done to a blind man? Because it speaks to us that when we deal with challenges, when we deal with mud that comes our way, it opens our eyes to a whole new perspective that we wouldn't have seen. As the man removed the mud, he had sight. He had perception of things that he previously didn't have. Wow, what a message in this miracle. And I feel like this is such an important message because many of us get confused about mud moments. Maybe there's somebody in your family right now going through a mud moment. And this is something we need to talk about and understand what's going on because many people walk away from God in a mud moment. He doesn't love me. If God really cared, why is this happening? They get all into confusion without the understanding. This isn't permanent. This is something you're actually meant to deal with and move through. And I feel like God wants to say to people uh, listening right now, wherever you are, online, in the privacy of your own living room, wherever, that God's saying to people, I put the mud in your life because I saw you stuck in a perspective of life. I saw you complacent about accepting some things in your life. I saw you stuck in that mindset. So I have sent mud into your life to force you out of the rut that you're in to open up your eyes to a whole new perspective. Now make your way to the pool, deal with it, wash it off, get through this and it'll open your eyes to a whole new perspective on life. So why would a loving God put mud in a person's situation? This is something we need to understand about the economy of God, that He's more interested in a miracle that's happening in you than He is a miracle happening to you. See, it's it's the person that you're becoming that's of eternal value to God. Things of this life will come and go, but the only thing that you get to take with you when this earthly pilgrimage, this earthly journey is over. The only thing you get to step across the threshold of eternity and take with you is the person you've become. So in God's economy, as He weighs up the circumstances of life and who He sees you being on and on into eternity, of course He chooses that one because He won't give you something of temporary value to sacrifice something of eternal value. So we need to understand that uh, about the economy of God. See, you might have forgotten something about yourself, but God hasn't. And that is you're eternal. You'll never cease to exist. So in the economy of God, sending mud and challenges into your life, because He's never lost sight of who you are in eternity and the plans He's got for you beyond this stage of your existence. He never loses sight of that. God is looking at you in eternity and working in in your life in this moment. And that's why, my friend, from time to time, He sends mud to challenge you, to wake you up, to give you a whole new way of seeing things. I love this verse, this uh, passage here in uh, um, Psalm 84. It really came into my life at a time of great mud. 
uh, personal tragedy in my family, the loss of my uh, brother through a tragedy that happened. And it really was mud that threw me, confused me. And I, I need to tell you, I didn't make my way straight to the pool. I wandered around in confusion and, and thinking all things about God uh, in that moment of mud. It really did uh, mess up my whole understanding of well, how could this happen, etc., and so on. And God in His mercy brought this passage of Scripture into my life and it remains one of my life-shaping verses. Uh, it says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they, these pilgrims, as they pass through the valley of Bacchus, they make it a place of springs, or some translation says they make it a well. I like that. The autumn rains also cover it with pools and they don't, they don't waste away, they don't give up in despair and depression. These people go from strength to strength until each of them appears before God in Zion, which is God speak for being with God in heaven. Let's unpack what this is saying and how relevant it is to making our way to the pool and dealing with these mud issues in our life. These people have set their heart on pilgrimage. Listen, what's a pilgrim? Pilgrim is somebody that's on a sacred journey. They know that they're on a journey to a sacred place. And God says, you might have forgotten that your life is a pilgrimage here on this planet, but I haven't. You're on a journey to a sacred place and you need to wake up to the fact that your life is a pilgrimage. And that changes our perspective of how we're meant to handle it when we go through the Valley of Bacchus. Now, Bacchus represents not so much a geographical place, but a valley we pass through in our journey of life. Bacchus means weeping and brokenness. And you and I, we pass through those times. That's just part of our pilgrimage, part of our journey. But these people, because they've got pilgrimage, they understand it. This isn't all there is. I'm on a journey to a sacred place. When they go through those mud moments, they dig a well. They don't get bitter, they get better. They don't uh, dig a grave, they dig a pool of resource. They turn their mess into a message. They take the seeds of sorrow and plant them and it brings forth greater fruitfulness in their life, they understand, they get that perspective and they go from strength to strength until they all appear before God in Zion. These people, these pilgrim people, they don't transmit their pain, they transform it into something wonderful. I'd like to think that right now, I'm speaking to you out of a well that's been dug in me, not through the good times, but through mud moments that I've had to work through uh, in my life. So we need to deal with any illusions that we have about what our life's all about. We're here to get something and this earthly pilgrimage, we couldn't get any other way but by being here. And what is it? Well, it's maturity. You're here to mature because everything else that you acquire in this life, you're going to leave uh, behind. God is preparing you as a person for something beyond this life. That's why He permits, even brings mud moments into our life. Here is a verse from the book of James that only pilgrims would really understand. It says, Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colours. So don't try and get out of anything prematurely. That's a word for people listening to me right now. Stop, don't try and get out of something prematurely. Let it do its work so that you become mature 
and well developed, not deficient in any way. So maybe our biggest problem is we think we're not meant to have problems. In fact, a lot of psychiatrists would tell us that this is the struggle of many people with their mental health. They just cannot accept that life can be difficult uh, at times. But when we can accept the life presents mud moments, challenges, difficulties, somehow our life seems to get better, not necessarily because they go away, but because we stop raging against them. We stop resisting them so strongly and realize there is a message in this mess. I am becoming someone. I need to make my way to the pool. I need to have a whole new perspective of what's going on in my life right now. Look at this verse. In Hebrews 12, it says, this trouble you're in isn't punishment. This mud is not punishment. <laughs> it's training the normal experience of children. Okay, so maybe right now there's mud happening in your life and you're asking, what does this mean about me? What does this mean about God? Well, please understand it's not about the mud. It's about the person that you become as you deal with it, as you wash it off. The miracle isn't in the mud, it's in the person you become as you deal with it. You know, over my entire life as a follower of Jesus, I've prayed and asked God to bless my life and He has in abundant ways, my family, my finances, so many areas. But you know, the truth is, sometimes what I got was mud. I got mud and I could tell you some of my mud stories and, and you might be listening there at home and think, well, you call that a mud story? I'll tell you a mud story. And suddenly we're comparing mud stories and we're doing something with these, these mud stories that Jesus never intended us to do. We're making them a part of our identity. We're making them a part of, of who we are. We have lost our way to the pool. We should have gone straight there and dealt with it. But here we are years later, still rehearsing these mud things, still wandering around, asking people, why did this happen to me? How could this happen to me? When all along, we've turned this whole mud incident into something Jesus never intended it uh, to be. We've made it a part of our identity and it's taken on the meaning of guilt and shame and rejection and self-pity, uh, when the only real message, the only real testimony that was meant to be coming out of our mud moments was, I was blind, but now I can see. What I went through has brought about a whole new perspective in my life. Thank God for that mud. That's a whole new way of seeing. So let me speak to some people who are listening to this message right now. It is a now word for you. This word is on my lips and in my heart because God cares about you. He's seeing you struggle in all your confusion and He sent this word to bring clarity and to rescue you from some of the decisions that you're about to make because they're based on a whole different and wrong perception of what's actually going on in your life. Some of you have traveled to come to a new country and you, you've expected great things to happen. And right now you're dealing with disappointments. Things haven't worked out as you planned. And you know what? Leaning into the camera, what I'm gonna tell you is God did that. He sent that mud there because you were so fixated on everything going this way, He was bringing an opportunity from a whole different perspective, but you couldn't see it. So He sent mud to wake you up, to turn you around and see Him bringing His power and provision and goodness to you from a whole different, you were just on repeat. You were just in a rut of doing life always the same way God has bumped you out of that rut by sending mud. Or maybe you need physical healing. And uh, right now mud's coming. And you say, God, what's going on in my life? Well, I want to tell you what's going on in your life is 
you know, your soul was in pain long before your body was. And your body is now reflecting the pain of your soul, the forgiveness you need to wash off, the resentment, the, the hurts that you need to deal with. You know, it's not too late to make your way to the pool.